Whew. I hate winter, especially as somebody who works outside in it, and especially as somebody who lives in Connecticut, because winter time, not only is it cold, but it's build season. And with build season comes the need for parts. You all know how difficult it is for me to get sponsorship. And for those that I have, I appreciate it greatly. That's why I joined and got accepted to the racechoice.com sponsorship contest. And this is where you all come in. This is where you can help me out a ton. At this point, they are not a paid sponsor of my car. However, they're going to help you out in turn helping me out by giving everybody 5% off at racechoice.com on parts, accessories, whatever you need. If you are a racer and you need safety gear or parts for your race car, they have them. If you are off-roading and they, any sort of other motorized interests like that, they can find it or they have it for you. So if you go to racechoice.com, enter the code, and I'll put it here at the bottom, support Gleason, They'll give you 5% off. Hey, Rock Auto can do 5% off. 5% off helps a long way. Trust me, a few bucks here and there makes a lot of difference. So if you could help me out as a valued subscriber of my channel, head on over to racechoice.com. Help me out with that drawing, or not even a drawing, but it's a sponsorship contest. And use that code support Glees and get 5% off. That would help me go a long way to getting a future sponsorship. I think the end of it is uh, beginning of April. Help me out there. Go to racechoice.com and enter that code below to save you 5% off and help me out as well. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. We're actually going to be doing some work on the street stock instead of me spending all video talking to you. So that's good. If you're new to the channel or a returning viewer or subscriber, thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. Please subscribe if you haven't already. We do a lot of racing stuff. I do a lot of mechanical stuff. Uh, if I'm not doing race car stuff, engineering, fabrication, you name it, we do it. But it's usually race car stuff. Anyway, uh, we're going to get back to work on this car. Again, the last couple videos have been pretty weak, and I apologize for that. But stuff's been kind of happening and behind the scenes. And I don't really know if I want to tell you about it yet, but uh, it's going to have, well... It'll be on the channel eventually, whatever happens, either way. But for the time being, this is the only car I can really run. And if you watch the last video, it's... Um, is hammered a good word? Or is that just a pun? And puns are lazy writing, so I don't really like that. But it's just not good. If you have any sort of stress in the chassis... It's not going to handle right. Race cars flex a very small amount, but they do flex. And if you can't get it to do uh, or react the way it was intended to, it's just not good either way. So you're never going to handle properly. So I don't know how to fix this other than a new chassis. And we all know that I can't even afford the late model right now. So that's up for sale. If you have missed that, the late model is up for sale. If anybody is interested in an American Canadian tour style crate late model, hit me up. If not, thanks anyway. Besides that, we had electrical problems on this car. I've got to go through the drive line and stuff and make sure everything's okay. I didn't really notice any problems, but I have a transmission in this car that is um, a little more rare than I'd like and they're kind of pricey, and I'd really like to save it for if I need a specific gear ratio, because every transmission we're allowed to use is one-to-one, -one, like this one that I got on the shelf here that I just figured out yesterday that I can't use, so I didn't bother putting it on the channel. It's like a three-speed Muncie. I don't even know the ratio. I have to look it up, but nobody knows that they made a cast-iron three-speed Muncie for some reason, even though I have three of them. Anyway... <laughs> Anyway, um, the electrical issue with this car, that's what we're working on. And then we're just going to keep snowballing into whatever else we find. Because this has to be ready by first or second weekend of April. So 
we still got a lot of time. We'll be fine. If you were with me last video, you saw me take and figure out that one of these cables was hot. And I charged this battery. But before I charged it, I checked the voltage and it said 12.2. Even though when I hit the main power, nothing showed up. So something's definitely got some kind of a short or ground issue. I charged it up and, I don't know, light's green, so... I just checked the voltage is 12.8, so I don't think it's the battery. And I've never had a problem with these types of batteries, but you never know. So I'm going to start tracing wiring, and I'm probably going to start pulling it up apart and see if any of the jacketing around the wiring has frayed or if, if it's like grounding the positive or if the ground on the negative is just poor. I'm going to check the switch inside the car. And we're going to see if the main power switch has any issues. And then um, after that, I don't really know what to do if we don't find anything there. So I moved to the front. Not really a lot going on here. It's just all winterized and unhooked. I left the exhaust out of the car sitting straight upright so that hopefully mice won't be throwing acorns in there because it'll be on a flat plane and I didn't have any tennis balls to throw in the mufflers. But, you know, they... Love to make any sort of nest around here that they can because this is basically just a giant shed and they can get in here, but that's all out. I don't plan on really doing a heck of a lot here. Everything's still hooked up. I'll probably just put the exhaust back in, slap the carburetor back on, stick the fan back on because I don't know why I took that out, but here we are. Maybe I was going to pull the radiator out and uh, weld a cap over this, but at this point... I don't really know, because I know we had some sort of issue with this kind of being uh, stripped out. Because I thought, you know, I put a uh, little hose on this, and we were at Stafford, and somebody on the crew tried to cap it, and it got... Well, when we pulled the bung out, it stripped, and then that one wasn't really going in. So I might have to cut this off and cap that, because I use a cap there, but that's not important, and I might cut that out, but... Otherwise, I mean, again, if you look at this chassis, like I showed you in the last video, she's been used up. I mean, we got, you know, splice marks everywhere, and, you know, it's been sectioned and cut down the side, and the back half's been cut off, and the, you know, stuff's been channeled. and It's just really been through the ringer. Sorry, it's really hard to walk around in here. Again, front clips have been put on it. You can see this pipe here is dinged and bent in. and Every bar is dead, so I don't really know what to do, but we'll figure it out. Okay, I know I made this ground brand new when I put the rear clip on it, and that is as tight as it ever could be. And then if the ground really comes into contact with anything... It's inconsequential because, well, it's the ground. It's not going to shock anything. So this ground cable is actually fine. I'm going to have to start looking over here at the power. Uh, it's ugly, but it's very well connected. No corrosion. I got a grommet there, so that's smart. Let's try to pull that out. I don't see any bare wire whatsoever. So if it's a short, at least I got the confidence in knowing that I put rubber grommets so it won't wear through the wire. All right, let's move up top and see what we can find up there. So it looks like I was at least a little bit smart. I mean, this looks like it's got paint on it, but yeah, there is no way that jacketing is in peril at all. I got these clamps, but I put rubber hoses in the rubberized clamps and roll bar tubing, but it held it. And then over here, I think I got some kind of a rubber hose also inside of that. So I don't see anywhere it could be arcing except for this. Maybe I'll take a look over here. I see some paint worn off of a 
oh, it's not even touched. And then that over there has a grommet and that's not bare either. So I'm thinking that what we might be looking at here is not exactly a uh, problem with a cable grounding on the body. I'm wondering if the power switch is bad. So I'm thinking I might take a pair of pliers and just jump the two terminals on it and see if I could get power that way. Actually, um, it turns out that I'm the world's biggest idiot. This cable goes to the starter, and I didn't realize that it wasn't hooked up, and that it was just kind of yeah, jammed into the, the frame here, this hood upright that I put up. There's our problem. Thankfully, I only had the battery switch on very, very short amount of time. I didn't leave it on or turn it on more than like three, four seconds. So I think we'll be all right. And plus the wiring never really got hot enough. If you see hot, it's because I poured a whole bunch of solder down this thing so it wouldn't come apart. But that was a long time ago. So the wiring itself didn't get hot enough to burn anything. So... I'm going to go wrap this thing up in a leather glove, and then I'm going to hit the switch again to see if we got voltage this time. There we go. Now I put this thing somewhere safe. All right, hopefully it won't touch anywhere. Well, if it does, at least the glove will stop it from arcing, I think. All right, that should be fine. Let's go around because I can't see the voltage. All right, let's see if we got voltage now. Oh, I didn't hook the battery back up. That's right. Man, I am out of it today. Usually I'm a lot better than this, but... I guess it's just... I forgot that this car was as disassembled as it is right now. So I guess I'll grab an 8mm wrench and see if I can't put this thing back on and then try it. Okay, now that that's done... Let's try it again. That's better. Okay, there is no wiring problem. I'm just stupid. See, sometimes, you know, even the most experienced can just do stupid stuff like, well, maybe not stupid. Let's say forgetful stuff. And uh, it could cost you time, efforts, monies, whatever the case may be, but at least we got it resolved fast and it's just that I'm forgetful. This is why... I only have one car because I can't remember all the stuff that I've done and it ends up biting me in the ass. So that's why that's why the late model is up for sale and that's why I'm only sticking to this car even if it is a little bit beat up. So that figured out and thankfully I had the damn switch off or else my trailer and car would have burnt to the ground we can move on to something else. Now, I think the front end's gonna have to get pulled apart at some time. It's gonna need new brakes, it's gonna need, I'm gonna need to check the brakes. I have to do brakes in this car, that's right. So, when I was at Stafford the last race, I think it was championship night, not the fall final final, but the champions night, um, we had brake issues, like big, big brake issues. I mean, we're talking about, I would go in the corner every single time, even with the brakes cold, and have to pump them. Not great. I know I'm running C-clip style axles in the rear with, with uh, disc, disc brakes, if I could spit that out. And I'm wondering if there's a little bit of end play going on with the axles and it's pushing apart the calipers. But I mean, I put these types of brakes on like my brother's car or, or anybody else and they're like, oh yeah, I just step on the pedal, it stops. So why is it my car that's the problem? If I can put it on other people's cars and it'd be fine, why doesn't it work on my car? Anyway, we're gonna dig into that. I don't really know what to do other than to completely rebuild the brake system, which I don't wanna do, or there could be inherent air trapped in the system, maybe the master cylinder. Maybe I'll just throw a quick bench bleed on it. I'll order a bunch of uh, brake fluid, 
because I'm getting a little bit low on the racing stuff. And we'll just get my old Timu vacuum thinger out. And I'll not only bench bleed, because here, let me show you what I got on my car because it doesn't matter to me what you see. You're gonna find that on a lot of cars, they put these little cylinders in at the end of the brake master. Those are residual pressure valves. Now what those valves do is they hold a very minute amount of pressure in your brake system. A lot of times guys use them if they have their pedals mounted at the bottom of their tin work, but in these cars, obviously we have to put them up because we have a frame rail in our way and we can't really accomplish that. So what we do with these residual pressure valves is that I used to run drum brakes in our rear of our car because that's all that we were mandated. So I'd run like a 10 PSI residual pressure valve on the, the rear brakes and a two on the front just to hold a little bit of pressure back in the system. It wouldn't be enough to hold the brakes on, but it would be enough that when you go after the pedal, you're gonna have pressure there uh, immediately. With stock style master cylinders, not in this car, but like in your road car, for instance, if you had drum brakes, there would be from the factory, a little residual pressure valve built into the master cylinder so that you would have that exact thing. You would have, here it is. I actually still have it. This is a, this is the old Willwood that I used to run. This is a 10 PSI, but this would be built into your master cylinder from the factory so that you would have pedal, which is why you can't use a drum brake style master cylinder if you have disc brakes, because they'll stay on. My only issue is I can do brakes on anyone else's car. No problem. I know the mechanics of it. I can go do it on my road cars. I can change master cylinders and lines and calipers. I can do anything on my road cars and then bleed them out. Fine. I touch this race car, complete chaos. Completely. I mean, I've got an entire box of master cylinders that I've used over the years. I don't even know if they're bad. I just never had brakes, so I would just blindly throw parts at it. I even have master cylinders in my toolbox because who knows if one goes bad at the track, I might need one. I don't know why my car doesn't work for, and I think people are gonna be surprised to hear this, but for five years, yeah, at least, I've had to pump the brakes every single time I enter the corner. It doesn't matter what racetrack, doesn't matter, you know, what time of year, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter the master cylinders I put in, doesn't matter any of the brake lines I replace, it doesn't matter I've changed calipers front and rear, I've changed brake pad type, I've changed the lines, I've changed the masters, I've put residual pressure valves on, I've taken them off, I've... What do I do? <laughs> I don't know what to do. So, uh, I've never had good brakes in this car. Don't ask me why. So, short of completely redoing every single brake line, T-junction, flex hose, again, I think I'm going to start with the basics. Maybe one of the residual pressure valves has a little pocket of air that just is stuck in there and I'm gonna just loop the brake lines out of the residual pressure valves and back into the masters and pump until I don't see air. Probably won't see any anyway, <laughs> but we'll see what happens when I do that. It's a few days later and uh, we've been, been ordering parts and doing a lot of research and stuff. It is absolutely snowing like crazy outside. Like it's not even that cold. I mean, what's it say in here? It says like 30, almost 38 degrees. It's not even really that cold out. It's super heavy, wet crap. I got to fire the plow truck up when it's done and go do a whole bunch of driveways and stuff. But I'll show you what we're going to be working on next now that I figured out that I'm stupid. And, well, not stupid, just <laughs> forgetful. Um, we're going to start working on the front end here because it needs a lot of maintenance. So a lot of guys who race these types of cars, excuse me, have stock hubs on their spindles. 
I don't. This is a Coleman Racing safety hub, and I have one on the other side too. They are expensive. I mean, not counting the $125 rotor, the hub itself is like $275 a piece. So with that in mind, you know, you got to think about safety. Safety is like number one in everything. So I said, you know what? I've seen guys break stock hubs. What am I going to do? Go on Rock Auto and just buy a, a Raybestos rotor and hope for the best? No, I'm not doing that. I put safety hubs on both sides. Now we can't complain. The only thing that could ever stop this car from rolling would be a wheel braking, which I check those too and make sure that those don't break out the center. And if the spindle breaks, but that's usually very, very rare. So I'm as safe as I can be up front. What I have to do now is routine maintenance, obviously. It needs brakes. If you look closely, you can see all the cracks in it. Hopefully it shows up on YouTube because they like to dumb down my videos and make them not as high a quality. Or that could be my editing software. Who knows? This thing is heat cracked. The pads are kind of eh. I'm not running it no more. I'm trying to come up with some kind of a solution so that I don't have to buy a $125 rotor anymore. And I'm already spending enough on pads. So that's kind of whatever. So... I'm going to come up with some kind of a solution, and when I finally come up with it, I'll show you, but I don't know if that's going to be this video or not. But we got to, I'm going to replace the wheel bearings. It's been a couple of years. I don't race full-time. If I raced full-time, I'd be replacing them every single year. I'd be packing them every other week, depending on how hot I got my brakes. So grease is cheap, and it's a great uh, insurance policy. Also, if you run stock stuff, grease all the other stuff, too. Dang, these are my Stafford tires. They got a little dirty because I had to move the thing around the yard, but I hope this didn't go all the way through, whatever this is. Oh, that's not looking good. Yeah, that's the that's the downside of racing. Sometimes, you know, you run stuff over and sometimes you luck out and don't have any issues, but I don't know if I'll be able to... Oh. Okay, it wasn't that big. Pardon my uh, disgustingness, but... She ain't bubbling. All right, that tire's fine. Let's uh, wipe my diseases off of there. So that's all right. All right, we got away with that one, but that tire's probably kind of junk anyway because it's been heat cycled a lot. It's so tough in my situation where I've got a car that's legal a bunch of different places. Like, I want to race at a very specific racetrack, but I just don't really have the help to do it weekly. I need... Like, I need tire money, and I need fuel, and I, need, I like, need somebody to tow the car to the track, too. And, or I'm going to be there really late every single time. Maybe I won't even get practice. And it's like, that's really tough, you know? Especially because I, my work schedule, and this is the harsh reality of everything, my work schedule is Tuesday through Saturday. And I work 45 minutes south of home. And all the racetracks are, well, the ones that I want to race at, are all north of home. So you're talking 45 minutes south, then I'd have to come all the way back up, get my car and trailer, because I'd have to have it loaded the night before, then drive up north to do it. And it's like, I can't take 20 days, I only have 20 days off a year. I can't take all of them to go racing, so I'd have to go after work, and that stinks. Because I'm missing out on a hell of a lot. If you don't know, I'm talking about racing at Stafford. I really, really want to race there, but I just need more financial help, and I need more sponsorship, and I need more crew help, and I just ain't got it. And um, I'm missing out, if I'm honest. I feel like I'm missing out not being able to race there. With I could be I could be giving all sorts of exposure with their streaming deal and their social media. and I mean, Thompson... The people who run that place lease it. So what, I mean, they're already doing their own thing. They run their own racetracks up north. They have their own series that they run, which is the ACT. And they own Thunder Road. And it's like, they do as much as they possibly can. Their plate's full. And man, it's just, I really want to race at Stafford. But 
Maybe someday. Maybe. We'll see. But back to work. I keep blabbing. So I got some parts coming for the right front there. I just kind of have the tire stuffed in there to get it out of the way. But I have a, another weird issue with the rear uh, brakes and stuff here. I have this weird sound that comes from them because I noticed that my pedal, sorry if I'm a little far away from the mic, but I noticed that my pedal, like I've, I've said before, doesn't really uh, come back. Like I have to pump my brakes, but I go like this with my brakes. You hear that thing like vibrating? Not anymore. There it is. Like, I don't know what it is, but sometimes my pads, I can feel them chattering. I mean, these are like, I know the rotor's a little rusty right now, but sometimes I can feel my pads like chattering and I'm wondering if it's chattering down the front stretch or back stretch or straight away or whatever it is. And if it's like opening up the piston on the caliper. So, because I got street pads on it, I don't want racing pads because this is my Stafford setup. I don't want racing pads on it because, well, it tends to um, have too much braking force. So when you go into the corner, we have to run an open rear at Stafford and it just locks up the rear tires and you're sliding up the racetrack, wheel hopping the whole way. So I put street pads on it and it fixed a lot of the bias issue, but now I got this weird chatter that I'm gonna have to figure out. And I gotta find a spacer because I think I got the, the spacer that's got the bigger piston size. This is like the smaller one, so I gotta find that. But before I do all of that, I'm gonna have to go in and make sure that there's no air and no nonsense in the lines because this thing just it always stops like it has air in the lines and i remember one time i had a master cylinder on here i think i since got rid of it every single time i stepped on the brakes i could see air bubbles coming up from the piston and you'd think over time that'll just work itself out. If there's no air getting in, how could air possibly come back out? It never did. There were no leaks. There was no air getting into the system through any other means that I could tell. It always blew bubbles out of the master cylinder. I have no idea. I bled those brakes. I bled gallons of brake fluid through those things. No idea. I changed the master. It went away, but the pedal feel was exactly the same. What the hell do I do? You know, I'm sure somebody will tell me some kind of a suggestion, but I have I can guarantee you I've tried it. But I am open to suggestions at this point, but Short of replacing everything, which I've done three times, and short of bleeding gallons of fluid through it, which I've done three times, and master cylinders and lines and flex hoses and calipers and rotors and pads and all this other nonsense, it's like, I'm just going to throw everything away and start over again. I swear to God, but I don't know what to do at this point. Other than maybe I, I don't know, maybe I take and I throw a hose or a, you know, a line on the end and bench bleed the masters. I don't know. So we'll go through all the mounts. I'll go through all the lines. I'll go through the calipers. I'll go through everything I possibly can to see if I can't at least get some pedal feel back. But man, short of everything I've already done, what do you do again? Well, short of being clever and uh, pulling things apart to see what I can fix on it, I'm out of parts. So I actually have to go order some stuff before I really can get to work. And um, I'm out of propane everywhere. Like I have five tanks of propane, they're all dead. So I'm freezing. 
So I'm just going to cut this video pretty short. But at least I kept up with you guys. The late model is currently for sale, like I said. It is... Um, I don't want to say it's pending yet, but I will say it might be pending. We'll see what happens next week. Um, otherwise, I'm parts hunting. I have to get on and start ordering wheel bearings. And uh, I have some parts coming in so that I might be able to do the brakes in the front and make it more affordable. And if I figure out that that works, I'm going to share that with y'all so that you can save a few bucks too. Anyway, I'm going to take it easy. I'm going to go inside and warm up. I'm going to cut this video off here, like I said. By the way, if you saw at the beginning of the video, yes, I did enter the racechoice.com sponsorship contest, I guess you can call it. Apparently a fat middle-aged guy who never really did anything much in racing is still eligible for that but uh, like I told them I feel like I am the best candidate because I am quintessential short track racing a guy in his shed garage whatever doing everything himself fabricating welding engineering setup driving owning and spending a hell of a lot of money so I feel like I'm a perfect candidate for that. And if I can get that, maybe, just maybe, it could open up some opportunities for me to expand my racing a little bit. So we'll see if that happens again. If you want to head over to racechoice.com, again, they're not paying me, but they're passing savings on to you through me. 5% off your order with support Gleason as the code. Pop that in there and you can get your 5% off. Hey, it might not be a lot, but if you order a lot, it's still some bucks, so save yourself some money. Do that for me and help me out at the same time. And at the same time, you'll be helping out a fellow Connecticut-based business. So that would be great. It's a double whammy. But again, we're going to get back to work soon. I just wanted to get a video out to touch base with you guys and uh, show you what's on the table. We're going to get to work again as soon as I get some parts in. Luckily, the electrical issues were not as bad as I was thinking. It's just mostly my fault, and that's fine. I can live with that. But subscribe if you haven't already. Please consider doing so. Please tell your friends about me, because I could use as many subscribers as possible, especially for this contest thing, but also to try to get Google to give me tire money every once in a while. We'll see if that actually happens. But And I can also share my love of short track racing and everything that goes along with it with you all. Tell your friends if you think they'd enjoy something like this. And uh, until next time.